All right, so I've taught you how to install your very own Rust dedicated server on your local host, which can of course be translated to other dedicated hosting systems. I've taught you how to install Oxide and I've taught you how to install the various different plugins that I've been working with over the last five years or so. But the one question that I get the most often is what happens when I need to wipe my server and update my Oxide? People are always asking if I update my Rust server, do I lose Oxide? And the short answer is yes, with a little bit of no sprinkled in. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I'm teaching you everything that you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. If you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on notification bells so that you get updated when I upload a new video. I put out new videos every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. All right, so I have this server here that I've used in a couple of previous different videos, but I know that I haven't ran this server in quite some time. So I know for sure that it's out of date. But let's fire it up anyways, and I'll show you how I know that it's out of date. So one surefire way of knowing that your server is out of date is your client is up to date and you can't find your server in the Rust directory anywhere. That is 100% telling you that your server is out of date and your client is up to date. Another thing you could do is you could run the version command in your server's console, and it'll tell you all of the information about your current build. So if we have a look here at my screen, it says my current protocol is 2548.251.1. If we compare that information with what information is available at umod.org slash games slash rust, it'll tell you that my protocol should be 2553.252.1. So that is the most current version of rust available at the time of the recording of this video. Another command that we could run in our server console is o.version or oxide.version. That'll tell us what version of oxide we're running right now. And again, if you compare that information with what's at umod.org, my current version right now is 2.0 0.6219, whereas on the UMOD website, it says it should be 2.0.6249. So we know for sure that Rust is out of date and Oxide is out of date. So yes, at this point in time, we could just simply update both of those things and be on our merry way. But I'm also gonna take this opportunity to teach you how to actually wipe the different parts of your server should you decide that this is a good time to do that. Or let's say you're heading into a forced wipe being the first Thursday of the month. So for right now, we can just shut the server down. We don't necessarily need to have it running. And then we can deal with all of the files that might be associated with your wipe. So I know that the writing is really small, but you don't necessarily need to see what's written, but you do need to be able to compare this to your server so that you know where to go to get the files that I'm referring to. So for right now, we're not dealing with any updating at all. What we're gonna do right now is deal with the files that need to be deleted if you wanted to wipe your server. Let's go into the server folder. And if you only have one server running, you should only have one server identity in this folder. Or let's go in there and these are all the files that are associated just with this one server so as you can see there we've got some map saves we've got a whole bunch of player information we've got some save files and then we've also got these player.blueprint files now if you wanted to wipe your blueprints for your server you would delete these files if you don't want to delete your blueprints obviously leave those intact and you could basically delete everything that you see on the screen right now so player deaths player identities player states player tokens procedural map saves, SV files, everything else in here can be left alone. You don't have to delete this stuff. And in fact, I would suggest that you don't. So right now, if I booted that server up again, it would be a complete map wipe. My blueprints would stay intact, but it would use the same map seed and size from my previous wipe. So if you wanna change that up, you need to open up the batch file for that server. So I just went back to the main folder where all of my Rust server files are located, and I'm gonna open up my batch file with Notepad++. So if I wanted to change the map seed, this is the number that I would change right there. I'll just put a random number in there, except that one is way too big. And if I wanted to change my map size, I could also change that right here. So let's just change it to 4,000 just for argument's sake. And if there's any other details in here that you feel that you should change, now would be the time to do that. Some people change their server description. Some people change their server host name after every single wipe. Totally up to you. But this is the time to do all of that. And then we can simply save this file and close it down. We're done with that batch file. So if you've watched my previous videos on how to install Oxide, you know that we break the batch file apart from a vanilla server, and then we create an updater file that we would run anytime we want to update the server. Mine's just called updater.bat. You might have called yours something else, but let's run that now. So as you can see, it's downloading the update. It's gonna take a couple of minutes to actually run the update. And once the update is finished, we of course can close that updater and go back to regular business. So I'm gonna run my server again. I don't want you to do this just yet. I just wanna do this so that I can show you a couple of things. If you get your magnifying glass out, you might actually see that this server is actually running a map side of 4,000 with that new map seed that I button mashed into my batch file. And once the server is done booting, we of course can run that version command again. And it's gonna give us the updated version 
version we've now updated our Rust server to. But now to answer the question, does this erase Oxide? This is where we would see the first evidence that it's kind of yes, but also kind of no. So if we use the ODOT version command that we used earlier in the video, it's going to say this command is not found. So don't freak out, don't panic. It doesn't mean that all of your work is gone. If we go in and have a look at our Oxide folder, you can see all of the plugins are still there and all of the configuration files are also still there. This just means that this server is running completely 100% vanilla with no Oxide present at all. So of course the next step is let's get the latest version of Oxide and install that onto our server. Of course, going back to umod.org, we're going to click on the download button for the latest Windows version of Oxide. And of course, we're gonna be left with a zipped folder that looks just like this, oxide.rust.zip. We're gonna extract that to this same location and you can delete the zipped file if you want to. Let's go into oxide.rust and you'll be left with a Rust dedicated underscore data folder. We're just gonna drag and drop this folder into the folder that hosts all of our Rust server files. And of course, you wanna drop it into a blank area so you don't accidentally drop it into one of these folders. It's gonna ask if you actually wanna replace some of these files. This this number might change for me right now it's 36 I've seen it as low as 9 but that number can change as to how many files it's going to be overwriting and of course once you've done that you can boot the server again once the server's finished booting, of course, you can run those commands again. This won't be again for you. This is only again for me because I booted this server one extra time that you wouldn't necessarily have to. So let's just do version to check and make sure that the Rust version is actually up to date. And then we can do ODOT version to make sure that Oxide is up to date. And of course, matching this information with the information that we got from the umod.org website, of course, we know that everything is now up to date and we're good to go. So for a lot of you, this is all of the information that you came here for, but there are a couple of more important details that you might take care of during an actual wipe cycle. So when you're going through a wipe cycle, whether that be your scheduled wipe or forced by face punch, in either case, there are some data files that you might consider deleting on your server before you boot it for the first time. And I'm going to be using a live server that I actually use because the that test server that I had didn't have any data files in it because it doesn't get used for anything. So let's go into my Oxide folder and then let's go into the data folder. So you need to go through this list and you need to decide which files you don't want to carry over from your previous wipe into your new wipe. A really good example of that is if we go into the kits folder, you're going to see two files there. There's kits underscore data and then there's player underscore data. So the kit underscore data, do not touch that file if you're running kits on your server. That contains all of the information behind the kits that you've created in your server. But the player underscore data is information that you might not necessarily want to carry from one wipe to the next. So you would definitely delete that file. Maybe you want to delete your backpacks, even though most backpacks plugin have it built in that it automatically wipes on a new map save. You could go in and manually delete all of the backpack saves for your server. Or another really important bunch of files that you might want to consider deleting is your end teleportation files if you have end teleportation on your server. Again, these are just data files, not configuration files. And yes, end teleportation is one of those plugins that does have that option in the configuration file to automatically delete these data files for you anytime the plugin sees a new map save. So just go through this list and make sure that you're getting rid of all of the data that you don't want to carry over from one wipe to the next. I'm putting a lot of emphasis on this because this can be really important to the success of your Rust server. If people are finding out that you forget to wipe backpacks or something like that and they exploit that, it could very quickly break the economy of your server. So we actually covered a lot more information on this video than I probably intended to, but somebody commented in my comment section the other day that I didn't actually redo this video so I felt it was important that I get this information out to you. If you just happen to stumble across this video and you didn't actually search this out and you want to know what the heck it is that we're talking about, check this video out on the left hand side of your screen right there. It'll explain setting up a Rust server which will make this entire video make a whole lot more sense. If you haven't yet subscribed, hopefully by now I've earned your subscription. Hit that button in the left hand corner and of course if you want to support what I'm doing at Rust Admin Academy, hit me up at the Patreon link right down below. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next week.